Well, let's now turn to Russian uh, uh, literature, something called which is very well known in the world. And again, if you go back to history, we start at about uh, 12th century with this kind of uh, historical chronicle, which is known in the West uh, under the name The Tale of Igor's Campaign. And uh, I would say it is really a very bad translation of original Russian title because it has only one word in common, Igor, name of this king kind of quite different, you know, uh, emphasis. So it is kind of a story of uh, king, okay, uh, князь in Russian at the time, King Igor, uh, who uh, wanted uh, to defeat uh, pagan tribes south of Russia. Uh, he was not successful uh, with that, so uh, he was uh, taken as a prisoner of war, yeah. But the story is kind of long, and you see here I show the kind of maybe uh, one of very old, you know, books, uh, about this uh, story with this old Russian you know, uh, uh, Cyrillic uh, letters. Some of them now are, are no longer used. Uh, some of them are, look like this omega comes from Greek, like O sound here. So it is just uh, the, the, uh, the, play, uh, I mean the, the book from which Russian literature uh, evolves. And then, uh, interestingly, until uh, 19th century, uh, it's really very hard to find uh, very prominent names of Russian writers. But then, in 19th century, somehow, it was the time which is now called golden time of Russian literature. Many names emerged, and really, I show here only a few of them. Okay, the most famous Russian poet, uh, Alexander Pushkin, and his masterpiece is Evgeny Onegin, uh, this poem, okay, uh, which is called a novel in uh, a poetic style. Uh, as you see, he died when he was quite young, so 37 years old. He was killed in a duel. Well, it happened at that time, at that age. Yeah? Okay, another very famous and uh, a very bright figure is Leo uh, Tolstoy, a famous writer. Uh, and the most famous books uh, are produced by him is this War and Peace, about Napoleon invasion into, into Russia, and Anna Karenina and also many, many others. And these two maybe are the most famous, and uh, many movies were uh, made, and Hollywood also made several uh, movies, I think even maybe uh, late 40s or early 50s of previous century, they made uh, movies on, on, on these novels. Uh, he also uh, was uh, nominated a few times for a literature, uh, a, a Nobel Prize in literature, but he did not get it. Well, also uh, one more very famous writer, also very popular in the West, uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, his most famous things are Crime and Punishment and the Brothers Karamazov. So uh, uh, another uh, very famous story is, uh, what is it, uh, how to say, uh, The Player. The, the name, uh, yeah, uh, because, well, why he wrote maybe that story? He also was used to play in casinos. So he also, he, he spends a lot of money and somehow maybe in an attempt to overcome this kind of you know, passion, he wrote this book, The Player, about a person also who played a lot. So uh, it is just a very few uh, uh, names uh, from 19th century. Let's now go further, 20th century. It was a time of uh, many turmoils in Russia. Two revolutions, 1905, 1917, change of regime, collapse of Russian empire. Many people left Russia, they uh, went to the West. And uh, um, one of uh, very famous writers uh, uh, is Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, he left Russia when uh, uh, he was just at the age of about uh, 20. Uh, he uh, left Russia with his family, his parents. And his father was a member of Russian parliament at that time. So he was from a, a let's say, very uh, rich family. Uh, it's also interesting how he um, uh, said, how he understood himself. So here a quote from, from his, uh, actually some kind of diaries. He said about himself, I am an American writer who was born in Russia, received an education in England, degree in French literature, before okay, my, his move to Germany for 15 years. My head speaks English, my heart speaks Russian, my ear French. So he was a really a kind of cosmopolitan person. And what is also funny, he learned how to read in English before he learned how to read in, in Russian. Yeah? He also he liked uh, chess very much. Uh, he also has an, another uh, passion, entomology. 
And uh, he uh, had a very uh, big collection of different butterflies, more than 4,000 species. After his death, uh, he, I mean, his, his widow, his wife, uh, uh, did donate this collection to the uh, Lausanne University in Switzerland. And he also was a scientist. Uh, he published 25 articles on entomology. And one type of butterfly which he found is named after him. Well, uh, I really I like the way how he writes. And uh, he also was four times nominated for Nobel Prize, but he never got it. Well, time uh, goes by, and now I show uh, another uh, 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 names who got Nobel Prize in literature. So uh, the first Russian who got a Nobel Prize uh, in uh, literature is or was Ivan Bunin. Uh, he also left Russia after October Revolution, and he got the prize in 1933. He lived in pr uh, France, in Paris, and he also he died in Paris uh, in uh, immigration. Okay, uh, one of my favorite writers here is uh, Mikhail Bulgakov, also a very famous guy. Uh, his masterpiece is Master and Margarita. It is kind of enormously beautiful, I would say, novel uh, with a very twisted plot. Yeah, uh, written in a very nice language, so kind of something which I really I like and I enjoy very much. Okay, uh, another uh, very bright name, Nobel Prize winner in uh, literature, uh, Joseph Brodsky, a poet. Uh, his uh, poems, sure, it, it is very hard to uh, translate poem into a different uh, language. It's very hard to uh, express everything. But uh, some of his best poems in Russian, uh, they are so elegantly beautiful. Uh, he is kind of a genius uh, how he ca really uh, can build and break the sentence. You know, it is kind of something which not everybody can do. So this is something about Russian literature. Still, of course, we have a lot of things uh, to speak about, Russian music. Again, somehow until 19th century, maybe not much can be said about Russian music. Already in Europe, uh, uh, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven lived and passed away in Russia so far. Almost nobody then. Again, uh, 19th century and these names like Tchaikovsky come uh, up and uh, he is uh, the, the author of many uh, famous uh, ballets like Swan Lake, Nutcracker. Sergei Rachmaninov, who also uh, 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 left Russia after the October Revolution and he became an American citizen uh, before his uh, his death actually, uh, what is also in, uh, kind of maybe uh, sh shows his uh, links uh, with Russia. In World War II, he was in, 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 in the USA, but he organized a series of concerts, and then he just uh, sent all the money to uh, embassy of USSR in, in the USA to be uh, used for military budget, to, for, to, to produce maybe weapons, somehow to help his country to, uh, to overcome the war. Well, also very famous name, Dmitry Shostakovich. Uh, he has never left Russia. He uh, 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 spent all his time in Russia. But he's uh, mostly famous for uh, his uh, uh, symphonies, which he wrote in the city of Leningrad uh, in World War II. The city was uh, blocked uh, by, by German troops uh, for uh, nearly three years with a very limited supply of food and everything. The life was very tough, and uh, his music was played uh, at that time, and somehow it also may help to, to keep spirit high uh, for people over there. Of course, yes, Mussorgsky also, yes, Glinka also. So many, many names I simply uh, cannot uh, mention all, the, all of them here. Okay, let's now turn to sport a little bit, okay? Russia is a, a winter country, okay, ice hockey, yeah. We are not as good in football as, for example, <laughs> our Italians, yeah. yeah. But ice hockey, yes, we are doing pretty well. So here are some okay, images and some, some statistics. So 27 times the team of Russia or USSR became a world champions, and eight times they uh, did win Olympic gold medals. And of course, many, uh, many occasions to, uh, to get second place after Canada or after Czech Republic, yeah. So kind of you know, this very uh, tough competition, yeah. Okay, figure skating. It's also very popular in Russia, also in Japan very popular. So here I also just give a few numbers, okay, uh, uh, kind of statistics. Olympic Games, 27 gold, uh, golds, 19 silvers, 9 bronze. And world championships, I mean in all years, 80 gold medals. And I also uh, was very pleased to find a link uh, with uh, Japan when we speak about uh, figure skating. 
Uh, this player, Yuko Kawaguchi and Alexander Smirnov, they became world champions. So this is a uh, Japanese uh, uh, girl who uh, uh, did skate with uh, uh, Alexander Smirnov. So here are the, the images. Uh, she uh, uh, even became a Russian citizen to, to be able to compete for Russia in Olympic Games. So you see we do have some kind of sport connections as well. Okay, speaking about uh, sport chess, of course, should be somehow said. Uh, also, a story is uh, like uh, uh, one English journal uh, wrote kind of a joke, maybe, why Russians are so good at chess. Because the winters are so long, what to do? Just sit you know, inside, drink vodka and play chess. Okay, so here I show the uh, photographs of uh, world champions in chess. They are all from Russia or from Soviet yeah. Union. So the first one is Alexander Alokhin. Uh, he also left Russia after the October Revolution. So you see uh, these people, they just kept this world crown for 73 uh, uh, years, from 1927 till 2000. Only five years were kind of missed. Two years here when Alokhin lost the match to Ave from the uh, Netherlands. And here, when Boris Spassky uh, lost uh, much to Fischer from the USA. So all the rest is kind of domination of Russian chess players. Well, maybe because of winter, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 